on the spike in COVID cases and hospitalizations, we bring in Dr. Jason Salemi, an epidemiology professor at the University of South Florida College of Public Health. Thank you so much for joining us, Doctor. Thank you for having me, James. Now, let's start with the severity of the Omicron variant. If you're fully vaccinated and boosted, uh, symptoms might be relatively mild, but we've heard this so many times from people who are yet to get vaccinated or don't want to be vaccinated. They think Omicron is not that serious. You're a doctor. What's the truth? What about the unvaccinated? So we're absolutely going to continue to hear about vaccinated and even some boosted people who continue to get infected with Omicron. Because community spread is so high, we're also going to hear about unvaccinated people who don't end up in the hospital. They get infected and they have an asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic infection. But here's the important data on how well these vaccines are working to prevent severe illness. Let's say your risk of hospitalization is one in 10 for somebody who is not vaccinated. It would be one in 20, so it's half of that risk for somebody who's gotten, let's say, two doses of Pfizer, but is overdue for their booster, and it would be reduced to one in 100 for somebody that has also received the booster shot. So the vaccines are incredibly effective against hospitalization and other forms of severe illness. Now, we are hearing about Omicron's severity, and we're starting to learn from some animal models that it looks like the intrinsic severity of Omicron is just a little bit less. It's more likely to stay up in your upper respiratory tract, less likely to get down into your lungs and cause things like pneumonia. But it's hard to really know how much less severe the variant is because at this point in the pandemic, we have a lot more people who have built up immunity, either because they've been vaccinated or because they've had a prior infection at some point prior to the Omicron surge. And of course, people who have some prior immunity are much less likely to end up in the hospital. So suffice it to say, the vaccines are doing exactly what they were designed to do. And the severity of Omicron, we're still learning about that every single day. It seems to me that the issue with Omicron is that it's the contagion that's so serious here. So let's talk about masks. Uh, we saw that study that said if two people uh, are wearing N95 masks, they could be around each other for 25 hours without spreading COVID. What do you advise people to do? Should we all be wearing the N95 or KN95s? Well, look, to me, it's extremely important to understand that none of these mitigation efforts, not the vaccine, not masks, not distancing, none of them are foolproof in and of themselves. We should be wearing well-fitting, high-quality masks like a KN95 or an N95. But, for example, when kids are in schools, we also need to worry about ventilation and filtration of the air. And we need to also take advantage of rapid antigen testing to make sure that if we're symptomatic, we are certain it's not COVID. And to make sure that if we're going to be around people that might be vulnerable, we're taking advantage of these antigen tests. And again, making sure that we're not spreading this to people who may be more vulnerable. Yeah, you talk about children there. I think, you know, we've seen it not just in the United States, but around the world. Children do seem to be in the firing line, particularly for Omicron. Uh, how is it affecting children? We've heard these reports around diabetes. That's one issue. Can you explain specifically where Omicron is hitting children? Yeah, so first of all, unfortunately, at this point in the pandemic, I know people don't want to hear it, but the data on Omicron are emerging as we speak. It's premature to know for certain. There's just you know, the thing about children is there's just so many infections. There's so much massive community spread among all age groups. And children tend to have some of the lowest vaccination rates if we're talking about kids 5 to 17 years of age. And then children like my son, who's three years old, cannot be protected through a vaccine. So it's important to realize that although we're starting to see some slowing increases in cases in places like New York City, every single state is still going up with cases. And we're going to see hospitalizations and ICU admissions and deaths, those lag cases. You spoke there about peaks and different parts of the country are going to hit peaks at different times. How fast and how dramatically will case numbers drop? I think everyone is looking forward to that moment. And what will that mean for hospitalizations and deaths? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, if you look at a country like South Africa, what you saw is a very, very rapid ascent and then a very rapid descent. The challenge when we look at the United States as a whole is that Omicron is impacting different regions at different times. So, for example, 
New York, the rest of the Northeast got hit early. And so when you look at the increases more recently, the lowest amount of increases are in the Northeast. And a last question just here on children and schools. There's a raging debate about when and if to close schools and go remote. You've seen what's been going on in Chicago. In your opinion, is that necessary in some places? And if so, what's the bar to take that next step? Now, that's a great question. I think it's very much situationally dependent. I think it depends on community spread, vaccination rates uh, among staff, among students who can be vaccinated, the kind of mitigation efforts that we're putting in place in schools. And so, look, we all know that children deserve to be in school, but we deserve to also give them a safe environment to learn. Dr. Salemi, thank you so much for all your insights and stay safe. Thank you so much, James. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.